Welcome everyone into Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're going to have a great show for you today. I'm going to go over the three things that are at the top of the list of what's going on around the NFL, including the Minnesota Vikings, the rookie QB class, and who's got the best chance to do what. And then, what is changing in the training camps around the league? Welcome to Locked On NFL. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Locked On NFL. I'm Ryan Tracy, the founder of Rogue Analytics and your host here on Thursdays, along with the Locked On Chief Show as well. Have a little bit of an announcement. Want to give great kudos to Jake Liska, who's been hosting this Thursday show with me for quite a while. And it's going to be a change up here coming in the next week or two. Today, you're just going to get me. But thanks to Jake and everything he's done for the show. And we're going to move on talking about a couple of teams and a couple of positions that I think are really important. That really highlight where we're at going into the 2021 season. And unfortunately, I don't know that there's many other places that you can start than what's going on in Minnesota. It's been a tough few days, weeks for Mike Zimmer and the the whole entire organization up there. This is the latest and it's twofold. A couple of incidents have come along uh, specifically with their second year corner in Gladney uh, that they drafted out of TCU, a player that played 15 games for them in as a rookie in their last season. And I think actually has some upside, a, a solid player. I had a good grade on him coming out pre-draft um, solid athleticism as well, but got indicted for a domestic abuse situation, something that has kept him from the team since April. And so this can't be a, a huge surprise, but it certainly does throw a kink in their plans in terms about getting down the line uh, and developing their own talent at a position group that Mike Zimmer has been known to, to pay a lot of attention and a lot of coaching time with. And Zimmer has been frustrated for a number of reasons, but this cornerback group has to be part of it. What does that departure leave them with? Because you have to remember, they also traded Mike Hughes in the offseason as well. So they're down a couple of young corners that maybe they feel could be the foundation going forward. Clearly, Hughes, they, they decided to move on from, I'm guessing, because they had Gladney. But at the end of the day, it leaves them with a corner group that I think you have to pin your hopes on development on Cam Dantzler and trying to come along from where he was last season. You have Alexander that's there in the fold. And then you have the two older veterans that I think are going to be the foundation for what this team in 2021 is going to go through. And that is Patrick Peterson, newly acquired, and Bashar Breland, newly acquired. There's a lot of new going on in Minnesota. But for a position group that Mike Zimmer spends time with and is going to base his game plan on, the way that he wants to allow his linebackers to attack and get get that defensive front going, it, it is held up by those corners. This puts a lot of stress on trying to adapt the players trying to adapt to the system and the system trying to be a little bit more forgiving than maybe it has been in last seasons because you don't have the bodies to throw at it, at least not ones that you can feel are going to be prime time. Are they four deep? Yeah, I would say so. Are they beyond that? Don't know. And the future of Bashad Breeland, who's on a one-year contract, and Patrick Peterson, who's getting up there in age, makes you wonder about how much they can really push the boundaries with this defensive backfield group. It is going to make things a little bit harder should any kind of injury happen to this position group. And it's tough for for Zimmer because he wants to rely on it. And I think that that is something that he's done through his career. We're going to have to see how it comes out. But this certainly puts a lot of stress on the coaching staff and on the players. There's another ball of stress going on in Minnesota, and that is what's going on in the quarterback room. Zimmer has come out in recent recent weeks uh, and talked about the fact that he is frustrated with the level of vaccination. Now, that's a debate that we've had on this Thursday show going on and off for the last few months because it's been so volatile. And there's not one glaring thing, just the fact that uh, even the owner – doesn't have a whole lot of confidence about where they are, and they both term this as a concern going forward about the level of vaccination, whether they're going to be healthy. And that reared its head this week 
now that you have not just Kurt Cousins, but Kellen Mond and the third quarterback all out on the COVID list because I believe it was Mond that came back positive, and obviously anyone in the quarterback room is a close contact, and that's going to be a risk. That puts them in a very difficult situation on the offensive side of the ball now. How can you try to move forward? How can you try to build chemistry if you don't have not only your starter, but your proposed backup unavailable? It's, it's going to be a difficult thing for letting that offense try to come together and take the next step. Maybe they can move forward. The Packers are still in this division. There are some things that they have to get better at in order to continue to compete. You can't put it all in the run game, although I think that that's going to have to be probably the healthiest option going forward. This puts a lot of stress on what's going to happen with the quarterbacks themselves. Now, Cousins' contract, you can argue about that all you want. It, it is what it is. The fact that they're not there in this critical time in early August to bring the offense along and get that dynamics up of the Minnesota offense, I think that's going to be detrimental. It, it's something that I don't know that they're going to be able to correct, but the organization from ownership through the front office on down, as well as Mike Zimmer and the coaching staff, all show a lot of concern about where they're going and how they're going to adapt from this. It's going to be a rough road, and adaptation is what it's going to be about. I think that they have it within them and within their roster to try to make up some of this as long as they can get, hopefully, a five-day clearance off of one of those quarterbacks that gives them an option to start their install in earnest and get moving forward. Does it put them back to maybe begin the first couple weeks of the season? Probably. It's difficult to overcome this kind of, of setback, but... Once the season gets going, and a 17-week season this time, maybe that allows a little bit more catch-up time as well. We're going to have to see how that comes out. I'm very interested to see what it all comes down to and who steps up in the meantime. It's going to be an interesting path here in Minnesota, and I hope that you Vikings fans are ready for it. We're going to be tracking it here on the Locked On NFL show. But I also want to talk about a couple of other things, particularly the rookie quarterbacks, and where they're kind of sitting right now as we get ready to start seeing some preseason action. We'll get to that coming right after this. And I want to tell you about our friends and sponsors, rockauto.com, where they can save you not only money, but time. And time might be the more important because it takes time to go to a store and find out what they have in stock, see if it fits your make, model, car, truck, whatever it is. You can go to rockauto.com and save both time and money. It's important. Why choose to spend 50 or 100% more plus lose time when you go to a physical store, you can go to rockauto.com and get it all at one time. Rock Auto is a family business, and they've been doing this for 20 years. They make things easy, and their prices are reliably low, and they're for everybody. Whether it's a professional or a keep it up, your do it yourself kind of guy like me, um, my truck keeps running because of things like rockauto.com. I want you to check that out because they have everything from brake parts all the way up to air filters and everything else that you may need for your car or truck. Go there, explore their website, check it out. I think you guys will really enjoy it. And at the end of the day, it's about saving you that time and money. So rockauto.com right now, get the, the parts that are available for your car. Right in locked on when they have that little, how did you hear about us box? And let us, let them know that we sent you. Uh, amazing selection, reliably low prices and all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Fans, if you are into Dynasty, you want to check out the Tuesday show because they do a lot of not only Dynasty, but fantasy in general. And I'm going to take this in a slightly fantasy direction, but starting with the big quarterbacks, the rookies that got drafted into really, really tight situations, I think all of them are in it except for maybe one. And I think that their performance on the field is going to shadow their performance, obviously, in fantasy. And for me, someone who looks at fantasy from... Uh, a dynasty point of view, or at least a, a long-term keeper type league point of view, I think that that kind of lends itself towards the real world ramifications as well. And so when we take a look at what's going on with the rookies, starting with Trevor Lawrence, a lot of hubbub this week about bad practice habits, throwing interceptions. Uh, the ramp up period has begun in Jacksonville. And I think that while some of it has been a little bit overblown, I think some of it is also a course of being in a program that seems to be comfortable taking missteps and trying to recover from them. I'm not sure that bodes well for a lot of success in 2021, if that's the road that they continue down. It's a, it's a tall order, especially with the pressure of being the, the top quarterback selected. That always adds a little bit as well. The group down there, I think, should be able to help him along. But 
does the adjustment of the quarterback coming in the league and the adjustment of a lot of the staff coming in the league, not to mention the head coach, does that all add up to an environment that allows Trevor Lawrence to really excel off the bat? I'm not sure that that's the case. And the more of these things that we start to hear about what's going on around the organization, not just the fact that it was a bad practice for the QB1 at one point, uh, that should come and go. Um, I don't think that we should overreact to that. But do, you do have to take a step back and consider that, especially if you are looking at it from a fantasy aspect, do you want to draft that quarterback that is, I think, in, in a tenuous situation? I can't say that he has the greatest foundation underneath him. Um, from the organization, from the staff, where they're going, what the weapons are. Um, I, I do think that this is going to be a bit of a, a feel-your-way season for Trevor Lawrence. A lot projecting him to be, right out of the bat, the greatest thing on sliced bread uh, for the rookie class. I just don't see it that way. So word of caution for you fantasy players, especially the dynasty types. The longer that you have to hold a player, the more I would be a little bit questionable about that particular player. Then we move on to Wilson up in New York. A lot, a lot of complaints about him this week as well. I feel bad for the guy. He's getting attacked pretty pretty well from media sources. But let's remember something. And, and I don't think that we can say this enough. The absence, the, the tragic loss of Greg Knapp is a huge impact to what's going to happen with Wilson at, in his rookie season. Now, I, I think Zach's got good athleticism. I think that he'll be able to recover and do some things with his legs. But I don't think that the evolution of what he will be on the field in that offense is enough to really go out and make me want to draft him high in fantasy or keeper leagues. Maybe you feel better about it from the, the fact that he'll have so much support from the defensive side, which I do think is going to be a big plus in New York. Maybe you, you go ahead and you leave him in the higher ranks, at least for the rookie quarterbacks, if you feel like it's a one-season thing and that's going to carry him through. I'm not certain of that, and I don't think that I'm going to have him ranked up there. Uh, again, when I do only the kind of dynasty, long-length uh, keeper leagues, that's really what I'm looking for. That brings us to Justin Fields, who I think is in a really unique spot. Uh, will Foles be there much longer? We're going to talk about that here coming up in a minute. Is he ready to take over in, in an offense that I think needs to kind of feel its way back to its roots a little bit and allow him to become... Uh, an extension of what he's been in college so far while adapting to his best traits. I think that's an option. Uh, does he have the weapon set to really go along with it? There's arguments to be made there. Can he be productive? I definitely think that he can be productive. So I wouldn't be going on a limb to say that Fields is somebody that you can target for the long term, for the longer term fantasy leagues, and feel comfortable about it. I certainly am. I think it's going to go a long way to see how he starts the preseason. Uh, we should see some action here coming up in the next couple of weeks. And I think that will allay everyone's fears when it comes to draft position for him, where he's going to go, and how he's going to perform for you down the line. Just right now, it might be a little bit rough. If you're a Bears fan, you're just looking at this season. I think that you have to be excited about what you have. If you're not, then maybe you're overreading into some of the breaks that are getting put on. I see some some negative comments going around as well, but I don't think that's going to be long-lived. So feel confident if you're up there in Chicago and you're a Bears fan. And that brings me to the guy that I am putting at the top of my quarterback list for the rookies. And again, this is in fantasy leagues where uh, you know, the the mainstays, uh, Rodgers and Mahomes and Brady are all on rosters. This is, this is a new rookie draft only. And when it comes to that, Trey Lance is clearly my number one because not only of the athletic skill set that he brings, the fact that I think he's his lack of experience I think actually plays into his upside here better because I, I can think of very, very few people outside of Kyle Shanahan that I think can actually adapt with his skill set the, the quickest, the best, however you want to phrase it, in order to make him productive in 2021. I'm really excited for his season. Uh, I think this could be a resurgence for Kittle, particularly for a rookie quarterback. You know he's going to get fed more targets than an average year just because of that. I feel like they have enough in the mastery of the game call and the game plan design that's going to 
make him as effective as he possibly can. And at the end of the day, we know that he can break down and use his legs. And I think that's going to be an interesting thing, particularly for the fantasy aspect. If you're a Niners fan, I do feel pretty confident that this is something that I think you can take the quarterback play itself to the next level. Will there be bumps? I'm sure there will. Nothing says that it's going to be smooth sailing, but I do think at the end of the day, especially as the trial and error of the early couple of weeks, maybe even the preseason weeks, allow Shanahan to tweak that game design and probably come up with some brand new plays specifically after what he gets from that film from Lance. I think that that is going to be the future. And I think the future is here now rather than later. I expect it to be uh, an off and running season for Trey Lance. And I will put him at the top of my quarterback rookie ratings. I hope that you guys too, let us know down in the comments on YouTube. If you're not subbed, go ahead and do that and hit the like button too. And in the iTunes reviews, if you would review the show for us, we would appreciate it. There's a ton of hosts on here doing the Locked On NFL for you every week. That's going to be always something that we have enjoyment. And we want to make sure that we keep moving in the forward direction. So if you'd leave your iTunes reviews, let me know what you think of Lance on that as well. Now, there's a couple other issues uh, and some movement that we might actually see. We're going to talk about the Indianapolis Colts and a couple other teams coming up here when we get back from this. And Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to make all your sports action bets. Baseball season through the roof, NBA, NHL, obviously football, even UFC and MMA. Before the next contest, go to Bet Online on your laptop or your mobile device and check out all the sporting news, the odds, the bonuses, everything you need to place your action. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. It's your chance to get in the game as teams prep for their runs at playoffs or even a brand new season. Head over to the website, use your device, and check it out today. You'll receive a 50% bonus on your deposit. That's 50% on top of what you deposit at betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts, and use the promo code LOCKEDON. Let them know that we sent you over there. When we get into the school of hard knocks, not the show, I think you guys will enjoy that this year. We'll see what comes out of that television show. Um, I think when we talk about who's hit some bad luck already, no one can be farther up the list than the Indianapolis Colts. And I I feel for what Chris Ballard is trying to do in in acquiring Carson Wentz and having this injury happen. Um, An injury with a window that is so huge, it's very difficult to know how to proceed, even if you're in the room, especially when you tried to to say you're going to give it rest, and then you had to come back only within a couple of days and go down the surgical route. I think that's an important pre-trigger to what we're going to see here. Is there a chance that maybe he's on the the lighter end of it, the five, six-week kind of area, and they're just going to let that ride? It's certainly a possibility. But I think given the length of the injury, what we know about it, and combined with a second injury, I think that it's, it's certain that I think there is a need to bolster that room. Uh, we're going to talk about that here in a second, but the coincidence that it has is that it, his all-star guard has nearly the same injury. And when Quentin Nelson is going to miss that kind of time, and you have to think that it's definitely on the, the longer end of that spectrum for a guard, um, just given the, the mass that they're pushing around, that makes it even more difficult to really see Carson Wentz getting back into the swing of things and being as productive as they had hoped. It's a difficult thing for Chris Ballard to deal with, and I think he has two options in particular. There's been a lot of talk about it. I'm going to give you my take on what I think they should be doing to bolster that room. Uh, and first, I will say this. I, I think that they they were smart in making the investment in Carson Wentz. I, I don't think this was an injury that they could have totally foreseen. It obviously apparently was very old and has been missed a number of times through a number of medicals, so I can't blame that particular thing. I, I think the team that, that was really burnt the most in this is probably the Eagles because the compensation they're going to get is going to dramatically change based on the number of games that Carson Wentz is not going to play. That makes things difficult for them to try to recruit what they could out of that situation with Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz both having to move on from the organization. But for Chris Ballard, It comes down to two things. What we heard on Wednesday is that Phillip Rivers won't rule out a return, that uh, he's staying in shape and and could always come back. I think that's a really intriguing prospect because I think they've done some other things. Um, Their weapons are growing. I I think that they're getting a little bit more mature in how they attack the offense, and uh, I'm really into uh, a second year of Pittman and a number of other players. T.Y.'s kind of on the bottom end of it, the last burning embers of his career, but make the most of it, right? 
It's going to be a challenge to get a, an older player like Rivers back in the swing of things, but I think that that can certainly happen and allows them to I kind of think pick up where they left off. Now, there's another very popular option out there, and, and that is Nick Foles. You would have to make a trade. I think the contract is bearable for Chris Ballard in, in trying to get this, this team a, a functional quarterback that can work with Frank Reich. Um, clearly, we've seen what's happened with these two things before in the Wentz followed by Foles actually stepping up beyond the production of Wentz in the first place. We could see history repeat here. I will not put that past them to put that kind of thing together. Again, it goes back to what we talked about in the last piece about Justin Fields and about his progress forward as well. It is, I think, imperative that they do something. I would not like to see the Colts try to wait this out because even if you feel that Carson Wentz can get back from the injury within the even the, the shorter half of that time frame, meaning nine weeks or less. I don't know that you can feel comfortable, given his recent injury history, that you can keep him upright and functional and, and thriving at that point, given starting the season so far back at that point, I think is going to be a challenge. Now, can Carson Wentz do it? Certainly. He has the arm strength enough to get that done. He has the mental strength to get that done. It's about whether his body will allow him to. And I think that that is a risk for the Indianapolis Colts. Look for them. I do feel they're going to have to bolster that room, and I think they're going to be bringing someone in. Now, bringing someone in is one way to take care of a battle. It's also another thing to reinforce what you already have. That's what the Tampa Bay Bucks have done in giving a, a nice contract extension a three-year deal to Todd Bowles, who I think is still, even to this day, the unsung hero of the last Super Bowl in bringing down the Chiefs and making them pretty embarrassed, to tell you the truth. I think Bowles played a much bigger role than the media certainly gives him credit for, but even a lot of fans. And so this is a very positive step, in, in my opinion, moving this franchise into the future. Will Tom Brady be there for all of Todd Bowles' new contract? I don't. No, <laughs> I, I can't say that I think he, he might not. You never know with that guy. But certainly having the, the defensive mastermind there that was able to adapt and make his roster functional against the top quarterback in the league is something that Tom Brady and every quarterback wants to have in their back pocket. And I think that is something that will definitely pay off for him as they move forward. Now, can it, can it make the difference? Not necessarily. We're talking about the status quo here. It's about the players on the field, but it allows you, as this roster changes and adapts and ages a little bit, I think that gives them the foundation with the defensive coordinator to move forward in a positive way all the way around, even if that doesn't look two seasons from now what it looked like in this last Super Bowl. Now, the last thing that I want to cover, because it's just, it's just silly to the point that I can't blame Joe Judge for anything that he's saying at this point. If I was Joe Judge, I'd be probably more furious at not only the lack of discipline to get into fights. Those happen in training camps, but the volume of, of what this Giants fight was this week, but particularly the lack of accountability and the lack of general awareness that you're getting your number one quarterback involved in this. Um, evidently, he was pinned to the ground like... <laughs> It's just not something that you as a, as a head coach can ever see someone take that chance with. And I think that this bodes well from what I understand is uh, Joe Judge being received well by the players, but this has got to change a little bit. This has got to be more of taking the reins and taking control of this roster, I think, because when things get out of hand and the quarterback's involved, nothing ends well for any franchise. I expect that we'll see some changes, and, and I doubt that we see any other flare-ups, but... Let's hope that, uh, that Jones is able to just keep on ticking. It seems like he's none the worse for wear. Let's keep it that way. Uh, an interesting season ahead for the New York Giants as well. And I think of all these teams that we've discussed today, it comes back to me that this is very much uh, here on the 4th of August, the time where teams have to adapt. It is right now about adaptation. Uh, pads are coming on. You're seeing some injuries in camps. You're seeing the snaps have to adjust. And that will come down to the front offices as well. As players are lost, there will be a few that are lost for the season during these training camp cycles. That happens every year. It is going to be about adapting. And I think we might see, because of all this, because of what we've seen over the last year, you might see a few more trades before the season. You might see a couple of uh, extra signings after week one of the veterans that are still out there. Um, I, I don't think the guaranteed salary piece of that is as important this season as maybe it has been in years past but we're going to find out rather quick. And we'd like you guys along for the ride. We appreciate you being here. Make sure you like and sub on the YouTube channel. 
And uh, for all of you on Spotify and iTunes and all the old haunts, we appreciate all your time. If you'd leave us a review on iTunes, we'd appreciate it. Uh, for all of the hosts of the Locked On NFL Show, I'm Ryan Tracy. We'll be back with you next Thursday. Watch out for Chris and Q for tomorrow. They'll have something fresh for you. We appreciate your time, and we'll talk to you next time.